Hi, I'm Shade. Welcome to Coffee Bookshelves. Today we are talking about Terry McMillan's 2016 book, I Almost Forgot About You. It has been a while since I read a Terry McMillan book. I think the last one I read was Getting to Happy, which was a sequel to Waiting to Exhale. I feel like Terry McMillan wrote it when she had just finished going through a divorce and it was not very happy and things had not gone very well for those four women. I found it quite hard to read. I'm not even sure I finished it. The first book I ever read of hers, I think I was like 13 or 14, and my history teacher, the wonderful Miss Podmore, uh, gave it to me and she must have seen me in the school hallways reading sort of Babysitter's Club, Flowers in the Attic, uh, Sweet Valley High, James Herbert, a bit of fantasy with Diane Wynne-Jones and um, Tamora Pierce and, and just, you know, all these white authors and was like, you should read this book, not this one. It was Disappearing Acts um, by a black author. You know, I just felt like at that time, the books by black authors, they were great, but they were always message books. They were always books about an issue, black people fighting something and being oppressed or being victimized. It was hard to find anything that was sort of lighthearted or romantic, more casual, funny. You know, you had to read white authors for that. I, this is what the books that were available to me. When she gave me this book, again not this one it was disappearing acts it was like a revelation it was black people not being activists but just living their lives and you know sort of searching for happiness and i loved franklin and zora i loved their love story i feel like i would reread re it every year and i would gift it to people for birthdays and things and just for like you know the next decade and a half i was proper in love with that love story then i was got to my 30s and I read it again and I was like whoa this book is about an abusive relationship like it starts as a romance but things take a turn and then I couldn't read it anymore after that it's still a great book but it's not just this huge epic love story that I had fallen in love with as a teenager I mean in terms of getting to this one this year my theme for reading is black joy and so I just put black joy black authors into google and was like i will read what you told me to read and so i made a list and one of the first ones was this one and it is about a 50 something year old optometrist who just kind of wakes up one day and decides actually she's not happy with her life she's in this career that she finds quite boring and she pursued because she thought it would make her parents happy she's living in this massive house her two ex-husbands are long gone her children have moved out she's got all this square footage and she's just like why am i here and she decides she's got to make some changes like she's got to downsize she's got to change career she's just got to make some moves in order to find some happiness in her life one of the things that trigger her is that she has has a patient who comes in to her clinic and the girl is like the daughter of a guy who she was friends with benefits back in university and she had not seen him in decades but she just assumed that he was off you know living his life and she's shocked to learn that he's actually passed away and you know there's grief and there's panic where she just realizes that time is passing and that each day is precious and things that you're taking for granted might not be there tomorrow so she decides to kind of track down all the guys that she's you know been in love with and let them know that they matter to her and that she appreciates them and apologize where that's necessary um, and so yes that's part of her journey is sort of reconnecting with all these old flames I really love Terry McMillan's writing I love her long run on sentences and her the way she just plays fast and loose with punctuation I love her aspirational black characters and their bougie lives I love the relationships that she describes and they're always so rich I love the way that she describes decor and clothing and neighborhoods and just gives you like a sense of people and place I love the fact that she name checks name brands and I know she used to get a lot of criticism for that and it's the kind of thing that can really date a book but it also really places you in a particular location with a particular people makes it feel very immediate and she often writes in first person which I also enjoy and it's actually a lot harder to pull off than you would think but she does it really well and it just gives her books a sense of immediacy and like a forward momentum and you feel like you're there and it just makes pages almost turn themselves 
There's two sections that I wanted to read about these, the past loves of this main character, Georgia Young. And the first one is this guy that she meets um, in her first year in university, who they have like a whirlwind romance, they meet in a club, and they have this very hot and heavy romance. And then at one point she realizes that, okay, this is not somebody I'm gonna spend my life with. Like, this dude is not the one. On a night he wouldn't go home, I just sat there and looked at him while he watched Sanford and Son. He was so engaged he didn't even know I was studying him. He really wasn't all that handsome. In fact, he was starting to favour Abraham Lincoln. It was creepy. Every time he laughed, I started noticing that his teeth were getting beige and that they'd only looked white because of his moustache and because he was also the colour of a double espresso. Those lips which had been so soft and warm and juicy and tender now seemed to need more and more chapstick. I had also started realising he wasn't as concerned about personal hygiene as he should have been. The list of things about him that were getting on my nerves kept growing, but it's also very hard to tell someone you've been having for dessert almost every single day and night that your taste buds were changing. So that's a dude that was on the way out. A dude that was on the way in was this guy who she met in the university library um, and they connected and they went out for breakfast. We ate breakfast, lunch and dinner in that restaurant and would probably still be there had they not been closing. In 10 hours we discovered who we were, where we came from, why we were here. He looked into my eyes when he spoke which made me uncomfortable at first until I began to soften, then melt. He said please and thank you and would you mind if I and have you ever considered and did you know if and he rolled up his sleeves when we got to Malcolm X and Socrates and God and freedom and pain and love and beauty and honesty and why Berkeley and where on earth do we go from here? He walked me to my dorm and kissed me on my cheek then he asked if I'd mind if he swore and I said go ahead and he said damn and I said damn is about right. A year later, I was honoured to be his wife, and he said he felt lucky to be my husband. I love, I love her writing. It just pops along. It's just, it's so great. I love her characters. I love her relationships. I love getting immersed into her worlds. So this is a heartwarming book about second chances and reinvention and self-discovery, and about not settling for meh in life, but being proactive and feeling like you deserve to reach for happiness and find it. And I think that that is a lesson that we should all internalize this year. So I almost forgot about you by Terry McMillan.